It's a beautiful August day, about 22 degrees. No wind. I have some peas to desiccate today, about uh, 250 acres. We have uh, about 500 acres of peas total, so half the peas are ready. Then the other bit is gonna have to wait a few more days, still a little bit green. So I'm gonna fire up the rogator and we're going desiccating. to the field to desiccate these peas. This is the same field where we started seeding in early May. I think it was May 2nd or 3rd. So we're desiccating with Roundup and it'll give the plant some burn down and help it mature a little bit quick, quicker. Also give it some weed control also. So after desiccating it's usually about two weeks until you can go in with the combines and harvest that crop. If you have nice weather, some nice sunny days, maybe a little bit earlier, maybe 10 to 12 days, but usually it's about two weeks as a, as a guideline. These are our wheat fields on either side of me. Probably as soon as I'm done desiccating these peas, this wheat will be ready to spray so I can go right into there. It was actually really nice not being in here for the last few weeks in here pretty much all summer. May, pre-burns and June, in-crop spraying and fungicides. We are lucky enough not to spray for any uh, like pests and insects like midge or bertha, stuff like that. So that was nice. Had a little break, went to the lake, did some golfing. But yeah, desiccating season's here. So this is where I'll be for the next few weeks here in the swather until the, until the combines are ready to rock. set up here in the field. I had a row of uh, power poles that I had to go around so that was interesting. And 
the thing about desiccating is you have to follow the same track that you previously sprayed in. So when I did my fungicide in July or about a month ago, I sprayed this field. So now I'm, I'm trying to drive in the same track that I already did. And so you got to kind of start the field where you started that and you're kind of going to end in the same place. But that was a month ago and sometimes I even struggle to remember what I had for supper last night, let alone remember how you sprayed a field 30 days ago. But we're going to do the best we can here. I think the peas are looking really good. They're still standing really well. There's a lot of pods. As long as we don't get a rain in the next couple weeks, the plant will stay standing and it won't go down. And even if it does go down, we can shave the ground with our flex headers and cut as low as possible to get as many pods as we can. Some parts of the field are a little bit green, a little bit greener than I'd like, but that's kind of just the way it goes with maturity and you get this much rain. A little bit of a, a lower spot stay green just where the water sits. But if we wait for all these green parts to be the right timing, it'll be it'll be too late for the rest of the field, so pretty much gotta do it. in this valley where the peas are all green. I like to call those hills boom whackers because uh, sometimes your boom whacks the ground when your sprayer tilts. Just finished up. This field's 145 acres and I ended right at the approach. So I think I did it right. I'm just folding up right now. I think I got turned around and got backwards once but I got back on my track it's uh, it's kind of a kind of puts your mind in a pretzel finding the track you're supposed to be on so uh, I'm not quite empty but I'm gonna stop in at the yard and top up and then do my other field Spraying on the other field of peas here. Uh, this is a 90 acre patch that I'm spraying out. Um, it's kind of the only other place that's ready right now. This, uh, we seeded peas into this hay field that we broke up. Well, actually, we didn't even break up the field, we just sprayed it out and then direct seeded peas into here. And it's not too bad actually, the peas look pretty good. It's just really rough. That's why I'm going so slow. So I'm going to wind the video up here before I get bounced out of my seat. See you next time. <laughs>